And joining me now is the VP of the Commonwealth Foundation, Jennifer Stefano. Jennifer, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. What do you make of Hillary's report of Democrats claiming that, you know, we're bringing down the cost of preschool, we're bringing down the cost of elder care, and it eases inflation? No, just look, if they could, they would unionize the grandparents so that it would never be free and that they would increase the pay you'd have to make to your own parents to help you with child care. That's, the Democrats are not about lowering costs. They're about driving them up. This is why we have our supply chain issues. This is why we have an inflation issue. And they're doing a terrible job, for instance, at subsidizing and funding education. More than half of the children in this nation, a majority of children in fourth and eighth grade can't read or write. And now they want to go after and report to help the babies and help us take care of our children, please, we don't need that kind of help from the government. So what would the better policy be? You know, the first thing we have to look at is what would really help low income women. And I'm going to point out a great there is a big nonprofit sector that is trying to help, particularly low income women with child care issues. There's one in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania called Along the Way that sends volunteers into homes of single mothers to help them go out to work and go out to school. There is a lot in the private sector being done. But what you are going to do if the government gets involved is you are going to drive up costs and you are going to limit options. And that is going to crush not middle class and upper middle class women. It is going to particularly hurt low income women who, by the way, we're already killing because every time they go to make more money, we already cut their subsidies for child care and other government help. So we're disincentivizing these women to work and to have have a better life and at the same time ruining their options and opportunities. And since we're on the topic of progressive policies not necessarily working or quite frankly not working at all here, let me add another one. Um, the vaccine mandate, right? You take a city like mm -hmm. Seattle, the public schools there are closing tomorrow. So the kids are off today for Veterans Day and then surprise, we got to close tomorrow because 600 teachers and staff called out sick and we don't have 600 substitute school teachers. So parents, uh, yeah, you're not going to work if you still go to the office because your kids are now home Thursday, Friday, and through the weekend. That's right. The government sector teachers union bosses who fund the Democratic Party and the president's President Biden's administration call the shots in public schools. And I think everyone just needs to cast their eyes again to Virginia to see how that went for progressive ideology. You know, I know that the progressives think the American people are not that smart, but we're smart enough to recognize when we're being sold a bill of goods and then we don't have control over the things that we should, like our children, like their education. The answer is to let public money follow the child, okay? A backpack bill. They just did it in West Virginia. All state funding goes to wherever the child needs to go. So the parents have real power and it's not just through school boards. It's through having the funding in their control and that when they do things like this in Seattle, you can take that money and you can leave. As a mother, it bothers me to know when that low income women do not have the same options as a woman like me to have power over their child's education. And those women, yeah. more than anyone, end up getting hurt. And by the way, men too. It hurts men too. Jennifer, thank you very much. Thank you.